The finance ministry has for the sixth consecutive time topped the list as the most fiscally reckless institution among the ministries, departments and agencies. This was contained in Imani's latest fiscal reckless index. The index cited tax and cash irregularities as the drivers for the fiscal recklessness score. The Ministry of Health was ranked as the second most fiscal reckless institution. There's more in this news desk report. According to the Imani Fiscal Reckless Index, the Ministry of Finance has topped the list as the most financially reckless institution among the ministries, departments and agencies since 2015 and 2020. It cited tax and cash regularities as the factors dragging the ministry's fiscal recklessness. It explained that the ministry is responsible for 99.63%, representing 9.10 billion of the combined 9.12 billion tax irregularities between the period under review. The finance ministry also accounted for 80.10%, representing 2.35 billion cities of the combined 2.93 billion cash irregularities from 2015 to 2020. The index indicates that this trend has remained the same on a normalized data basis. Over the period from 2015 to 2020, a total of 13.9 billion cities in financial irregularities covering stores and procurement, cash, tax, payroll, rent, and contract irregularities were recorded. Iman is recommending that the Auditor General applies the disallowance and surcharge powers given it under the country's laws. The Attorney General should further enforce punitive measures against persons or individuals found to have committed such irregularities. Now, economist and finance lecturer Professor Gottfried Bokbin says banks operated in Ghana have rejected the original terms of the debt exchange program. According to him, the banks have made counter proposals to government that analyzes the impact of the proposed debt exchange on their balance sheets. Speaking on Joy FM, Professor Bokbin said the banks have indicated that even without debt restructuring, the mark to market valuation policy has resulted in explicit losses on their books. Um, already, the bank, we've seen a strong pushback from the banks. The banks practically have rejected the original terms of the debt testing. We are told that they've made a counter proposal. The banks have also analyzed the impact of the proposed debt exchange on, on, their, uh, on, on their balance sheet. The banks have indicated that even without debt restructuring, marking to markets of government financial instruments on their books is manifesting explicitly in, in losses. Mm. Okay, so there is a, uh, already a pushback from the bank. What, whilst it is good news to organize labor, what happened yesterday, it makes the road a little harder for government in, in our in our uh, journey to to restore debt sustainability one thing that we should know given the level of instability and the mess we have created you will see clearly that three years is not enough for ghana to restore debt sustainability and the reason i'm saying so so what it means is that debt sustainability is actually beyond an imf program now Now, the banks, according to the Central Securities Depository Monthly Bulletin, hold chunk of government bonds to the tune of about 40 billion CDs. Professor Bopping also said the 3% cut in the capital adequacy ratio will not be enough to cushion the banks against shocks. And, and then also under Battle 2 and scaling up, some particularly local banks may be required to bring additional capital. We have seen, and as we have indicated, that Bank of Ghana probably would cut away 3% of the capital position buffer, essentially reducing the capital adequacy ratio to 10% in order to accommodate them. But that would still not be enough. Okay, so the point that we had raised earlier, government is now coming back to the reality that the whole strategy that the government adopted in, debt, in this debt restructuring was poor and that it was going to get a serious pushback. So from where we, are, from where we sit, a certain level of debt restructuring is unavoidable. 
and it will still require all relevant stakeholders to come to the restructuring table. But more importantly, government being transparent, full disclosure, the extent of the problem, the various scenarios, and then so we can have some kind of compromise going forward.